Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Naden. In this video, I want to show you a very cool update to GitHub Copilot that makes it a very viable, very powerful, free alternative to Cursor. So just the other day, I discovered that VS Code finally got an update through GitHub Copilot, which allows it to run instructions in agent mode. Agent mode means GitHub Copilot is now able to fulfill natural language coding requests, read and write files directly in your project workspace, run terminal commands, and so on. This agent mode is pretty much similar to Cursor's agent mode, which allows the AI to plan and execute complex code changes. What's amazing with Copilot agent mode is that it can also keep all the changes being executed by the AI and allow you to review them one by one before actually applying the changes. The Copilot agent mode has been tested about two months ago in VS Code nightly builds, and with the latest update, they are finally released for all users for free. This update makes VS Code a powerful AI coding agent that can help you build complex projects with natural language, automation, and full project awareness. And in this video, we'll explore all of Copilot's new features. Alright, let's get started. First of all, if you haven't already, you need to install VS Code on your computer. So visit the VS Code homepage at code.visualstudio.com and you will see a button to download the version for your operating system. In my case, it showed the Mac version. Download and install it, and then we'll move on to the next step. Once you have VS Code installed, open it up, then immediately click on the GitHub Copilot icon over at the top right side of your VS Code window. A Copilot chat window will then be open on the right side of VS Code. If this is your first time using Copilot, a welcome screen will be shown in the chat window instead. Just click on the sign in button and you will be directed to GitHub so that you can use Copilot for free. Okay, back to the chat window. You need to look down on your chat sidebar over here and you'll see a drop down that has three options in it. As, edit, and agent. Now if you don't see the agent option in the drop down, then you might need to turn on the agent mode option in VS Code first. To do so, go to user settings, you can click the code top menu, and then settings, settings, as shown here. In the settings, you can just search for agent. And here is the agent mode checkbox. Just click on it to enable it. Now if you don't see this agent mode option, it's probably because you're using an older version of VS Code. This agent mode option is only available in VS Code version 1.99 or above. To check your VS Code version, go to the top menu bar and click the Code menu, then about Visual Studio Code. Here, you will be shown the VS Code version, make sure it's 1.99 or above. If you have an older version, try to update by clicking on the Code menu again, then select Check for Updates. Once the VS Code version is updated, you may need to restart VS Code first, and then you will see this Agent Mode option. Okay, now that the agent mode is enabled, let's see what it can do for us. First, I will open a project that I have prepared for this tutorial. This project is just a fresh installation of Next.js with no additional changes. If you run this project with npm run dev, you can see that this is a vanilla welcome screen generated from the create next app command. Alright, in this project, I want to install Tailwind CSS to speed up development time, so let's just ask Copilot to do that for us. Make sure that Copilot mode is set to Agent and fire away. Now give the AI a moment to think through. Here it tries to figure out the project. Remember that I don't tell the AI that it's a Next.js project? Okay, so it knows that it's a Next.js project. Here you can see that Copilot wants to run an npm install command from the terminal. It's asking for my approval first so that it can go ahead and run the command, but I'm not going to do that, so let's cancel here for now. Why did I cancel the request? Well, because the command it wants to run is the wrong answer. How do I know it's the wrong answer? Now let me open my browser here and navigate to Tailwind documentation. Here you can see that the command required to install Tailwind in Next.js is npm install Tailwind CSS at Tailwind CSS slash post CSS and post CSS. This is different from what CloudSonnet wants to run. 
which is Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. If I remember correctly, this command was used to install Tailwind version 3. Let me show you a moment. Let's open Tailwind version 3 documentation. So uh, get started. Framework guides and Next.js. And yeah, here you can see that the npm install command is used to install Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. Why Cloud still use this older way? Well, it's probably because of the training cut of date. Open a new tab here and look for the training cut of date of Cloud 3.5. Okay, here you can see that the date is April 2024, which is a year ago. And so it makes sense why Cloud doesn't know about this update. And this is a problem for AI models. Technology moves very fast and there is no way for an AI model to know about the latest upgrade or change after its training cut of date. So how do you provide important up-to-date information to the model in your instruction? Well, in Copilot, this is very easy. First, copy the URL of the documentation, then go back to Copilot. Open a new chat window and write the same prompt again, but this time, type the hashtag symbol and you'll see this autocomplete. The hashtag symbol is used in Copilot to bring a list of tools that Copilot can use. Here, we want to select Fetch as it tells Copilot to get the content of a web page. So select Fetch and then paste the Tailwind documentation URL. Also, include the tags follow the instructions in the guide exactly so that the model won't try to merge the guide with its own ideas. In this scenario, we want the AI to follow the guide exactly as it was written, without adding any creativity at all. Alright, press enter to send the request again. Here we can see the AI fetch the documentation from the link. Wait a while. Okay, so now the AI is following the guide and asking to run the right command. Pretty cool, right? So let's allow this command and let the AI do the work. Let it run the rest of the steps. Okay, so all the changes are done and now it's asking to run the development server. Okay, so after running the development server, the AI figured out that the packages are different from its training data. So here it tries to follow its training data instead. Just cancel this. Here you can see that Copilot still saved the changes. So if there's something wrong with the project, we can just undo the changes. Alright, now that Tailwind is installed, let's check if it's actually available to use. I will ask the AI to change the style in the page.js file to use Tailwind classes. Run the command again. Okay, here you can see that the page.js styles have been replaced with Tailwind classes. It also asked us for permission to remove the page.model.css file, so let's just allow it. And now it's done. We can see how it looks on the browser. Okay, so some improvements can be made here. As you can see, this button isn't really visible. It blends with the background. But that's fine for now, as we will completely change this page in just a moment. So that's just one way that you can use Copilot Agent. You can give it the latest information through a web URL so that the AI is augmented with the latest information. Alright, the next feature that I want to show you is the ability to add your own API key to GitHub Copilot. If you go down here to the AI model dropdown in the chat box, you will see options to select the model you want to use, as well as the Manage Models and Add More Models options. The Add More Models option will send you to a web page where you can upgrade Copilot to a paid plan, while the Manage Models option allows you to add your own API key to Copilot. 
Now, if we go back to the models drop down, notice that there's no Gemini model listed here. But I actually want to use the Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is ranked number one in LM Arena when I made this video. If you want to do the same, then you then what you need to do is to open the browser and head over to aistudio.google.com. Here, I will select the Get API Key button, then generate a new API key to use with Copilot. Click Create API Key, then select one Google Cloud project where the key will be generated. You can create a project for free if you didn't have one already. Once the key is generated, copy the key, then get back to Copilot. Select Manage Models, then Gemini, here, paste the key, press enter, then select the model you want to use, which is Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental. Click OK, and that's it. Now you can use Copilot with Gemini 2.5 Pro as the AI model. If you want to add another model, just click on this Add Model option again, and input your model API key too. Alright, now that we know how to run agent mode and add our own API key to Copilot, Let's try to run Copilot to build an app. I have this project requirements document, which I created using ChatGPT and modified a bit to suit this tutorial. So the following table outlines the detailed functional requirements of the to done list web application. Note that all data should be stored in the browser's local storage. And then the app should allow users to add a new task with an optional deadline, mark task as complete, delete a task, add a task, and so on. So I want to see if Copilot is able to build this app as instructed in the requirements. Let's put the document in the chat over here, and then add the code base as the context, and then type, please build the application as defined in this project requirements document. Thank you. Now, don't forget to add this thank you part so that when the AI apocalypse did happen, your life might be spared. I'm just kidding here guys, don't take it too seriously. Alright, let's allow the AI to run. First, change the model back to Cloud 3.5 and then hit enter. I will read a novel in my tablet as the AI is running. I will keep the video going but I will speed it up so that you can see the progress and I'll get back to you when it's done. Alright, so now Copilot is done, and it took about 10 minutes for Copilot to build this app from start to finish. Let's see what the AI has built for us. Okay, so here it is. This is our new web application. Right off the bat, I can see something wrong with this application. Uh, that the text in the sword, filter, drop downs are not showing. It blends with the white background. But it's okay, we can fix it later. For now, let's see if we can add some tasks here. Alright, so uh, learn React, and click the button. Okay, it's working. But the task name is again blended into the background, so it's kind of hard to see. Complete the task. Okay, it's working. Now let's edit it to add a deadline. Put a date here. Uh, let's see. Save changes. Nice. Now let's add another task. And then add another one. Test the filter here. Okay, it's working. Now let's test the sword. Okay, the sword is also working and then delete the task here. Okay, all seems to work well. For a final check, let's see if the data is actually saved in the browser. So let's uh, right click to open the browser context menu. Select inspect, application, local storage. And yeah, the data is persistent in the local storage here, so if we just try to mark it as completed, 
Here you can see the data gets updated by the app. Nice work, Copilot. And again, Copilot did all of this for us in just one prompt. It's absolutely fun and interesting what you can build with agent mode. One thing that I haven't explored in this video is the ability of Copilot to use MCP servers. If you aren't familiar with MCP, it's a new standard way for AI models to connect with external data sources and tools so that it can do more for you. I will create a video about MCP server next, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel if that's something you're interested in. And now we have reached the end of the tutorial. So what do you think about the new VS Code update? I have to say GitHub Copilot and VS Code are now a very strong alternative to Cursor and I think I will try to use it for one of my web projects. I hope you all enjoy today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if that's something you find interesting or useful. Don't forget to like the video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching till the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in other videos. Bye bye.